We would like to get into God's word. Shall we pray? Blessed and everlasting Father, we thank you, King of the universe. We thank you for your love upon us. And we thank you for grace that you continue to give to us every day of our lives. You've loved us with an eternal love, and we are grateful, Lord. Help us, Lord, that we may serve you with understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. I would like us to talk about a matter that I believe the Lord wants us to consider. I rarely say this, but I really heard these words from the Lord about opening our eyes. And it bothered me, uh, first of all, because I, I, I really was not sure whether God was telling me to open my eyes or whether he was telling me that he needed to open my eyes or that he needed us as his people to ask him to open our eyes. So I started thinking after I got that, uh, I think it was uh, David in uh, Psalm 119. David made a prayer, verse number 17, deal bountifully with thy servant, that I may live and keep thy word. Verse 18, open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Open thou my eyes, that I may see wonderful things out of your word. Open thou my eyes. Unless God opens our eyes, it becomes very difficult to understand the riches that are there in God's word. It is the closing of eyes of many people that you hear people saying that this does not belong to us now. And not understanding that every word of God was given by the inspiration of God and it is profitable. Even if you think and you feel that some things were for Israel, you need to understand it is still profitable. If you study well and understand well, you will get some principles out of that word which was meant for the children of Israel and may not directly be meant for you now, but there will be principles out of that word that are beneficial to your life and to our lives. He says, open thou mine eyes. Open my eyes. What we know today, what we understand today, is directly proportional to God's opening of our eyes of understanding. What you know today, what you are embracing today, is directly proportional to the extent of God's opening of your eyes. Had God not opened your eyes, you would not be able to understand what you understand. Had God not opened your eyes, you would not embrace the things that you already embrace. You know, there was a time in my life that I did not see the reality of salvation. There was a time I didn't even care. I never even used to see it, even though I read it in God's word. It never meant anything to me. But a time came, and God opens the eyes of my understanding. And I understood that there was something that I needed to do. There was even a time, I remember, that I did not think that Jesus was alive. The teacher I had taught us in school how that Jesus died. And I agreed. That is knowledge. And then I heard somebody preaching that Jesus is alive. And I couldn't understand. Because the teacher had showed us that Jesus died. But then later on, I saw other scriptures about the resurrection of Jesus. And now I could see. There was a time I never understood. I used to swear, almost like a sailor. And then one day I was reading the book of James. And God opened my understanding. And the scripture said, let your yes be yes. And your no be no. Anything beyond that is from the wicked one. And I stopped swearing. What we understand is directly proportional to God's opening of our eyes. There are Christians today that do not understand some things about God. Don't you blame them. Pray that God may open their eyes even as he has opened your eyes. I believe God has given us physical eyes to see physical things. And God also has given us spiritual eyes to see spiritual realities. It was Paul writing to the Ephesians. He said uh, that the eyes of your 
understanding. Verse 17, Ephesians 1, he says uh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. That you may know. The eyes of your understanding may be enlightened that you may know. Unless the eyes of our understanding are open, are enlightened, it is not possible for us to know what we need to know. And especially to know the hope of our calling and the riches of glory in his inheritance in the saints. There is something about God helping us to know things that we didn't know yesterday, to touch our minds and to give us an understanding. Now in Genesis chapter number 21, the story of uh, Hagar, after Hagar had been chased by, uh, by Sarah, where their drink was finished, the water was finished. Verse 15, and the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. Verse 16, Genesis 21. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. She lift up her voice praying to God and wept. Verse 17, and God Hallelujah. And God heard the voice of the Lord. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What's your problem, Hagar? What's bothering you, woman? I do not want to digress, but Hagar happens to be the mother of Muslims. Just think about it for a while. And the Lord we are talking about happens to be Ishmael. Think about it. And Hagar cried to God. And God heard our prayer from heaven. And an angel of the Lord came to Hagar. He says, what's the problem? What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not. For God has heard the voice of the Lord where he is. Arise, lift up the Lord. And behold in thine hand. For I will make him a great nation. I don't want to digress like I say. I'm just withholding myself. I could say things here that can surprise you. But that's not the point here today. Verse 19 is a point. And God opened our eyes and she saw. What is it that is available to you and you cannot see? It? What is it that is so near that can help you but you are not aware of it? Would God open our eyes to see? And God opened our eyes and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water and get the lad to drink. When God opens our eyes, we are able to see new opportunities that otherwise were hidden to us. When God opens your eyes, you will be able to see solutions that were otherwise unknown to you. I say God can open your eyes to see. We are living in days of uncertainty. When threats are coming from all sides. Times we don't know what to do. We need God to open our eyes. Sometimes God can drop into your mind a name. Somebody's name. And you call that person and get a solution to your problems. I say God will do anything through the appointed means. God will do things. But always through the appointed means. I just, I just say that backwards to make it positive. The negative part is that God will do nothing except through the utilization of appointed means. I mean, I have seen God come to my rescue. I would say in the 11th hour, God is able to open our minds, our understanding. Scripture says in Luke 24 and verse 45, it says, and then opened he their understanding. God can open your understanding. See, there was a time in my spiritual walk and teaching of the word of God that uh, I was very argumentative. I would argue with people for them to see the truth. I have learned not to argue with people. Because if you convince a man against his own will, he is still of the same opinion. But God is able to open the mind. 
God is able to open the eyes of people's understanding. And they say, oh, I see. In Acts 16, Lydia, verse 14, and a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, had us, whose heart the Lord opened. Hallelujah. That she attended unto the things which we spoke of, which were spoken of, Paul. God opened our heart. Hallelujah. Amen. God touched our heart and she attended to those things. I want to say when we are preaching, when we are teaching, when we are evangelizing, let us pray that God will open the eyes of understanding of those people that we are speaking to. When we relay a message, whether through Facebook or YouTube or whatever other channel, let us pray that God will touch the minds of people and give them an understanding that they may see wonderful things out of God's word and attend to them. When God opens your eyes, you will be able to see things you are not able to see. In 2 Kings chapter number 6, we got the story of Elisha and his servant. When the Syrians came to capture Elisha and surrounded him, verse number 15 shows us what the eyes can see. Verse 15, And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? What are we going to do? The young man, Elisha's servant came out and literally saw an army of soldiers with horses and chariots that had surrounded the city. And then he said, what are we going to do? This is the situation of many of us many times. You can be in debt. <laughs> People can be after you and you and, and literally you, you cannot see a way out of the situation. You are, as it were, surrounded. But if God opens your eyes, you will see a way out. For there is no temptation that has been given to us that we are not able to overcome. But with every temptation that comes, Scripture says, God always makes a way out of that temptation. But you require the opening of your eyes to see the way out. I say you require God to open your eyes to see how to get out of it. It does not matter the waves. It does not matter the waters. It does not matter. But we will go to the other side of the shore. We'll get there. Behold, a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Do you have a better translation for that? What are we going to do? When God opens our eyes, we will understand that we need not be desperate. There is a way out with God. New Living Translation. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning. And went outside. And went outside. There were troops. There were troops, horses and chariots everywhere. Horses and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? Oh, sir, what are we going to do now? The young man cried to Elisha. The young man cried to Elisha. Have you ever been to a place where you say, "What am I going to do now?" And he answered, verse sixteen: "Fear not, Hallelujah. Fear not." What was this about Elisha that he was able to see what the young man was not able to see? We need to walk with God so close to whereby God can open our eyes to see what he can see. And he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Say, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Mm -hmm. Verse 17, yes. Then Elisha prayed. Then Elisha prayed. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Open his eyes and let him see. Open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes. The Lord opened the young man's eyes. And when he looked up. And when he looked up. He saw that the hillside around Elisha. He saw the hillside around Elisha. Was filled with horses and chariots. Was filled with horses and chariots of fire. Do you know what surrounds you? Do you have the slightest idea what provision God has made for you? 
Are you aware? Are you allowed to understand this? In Psalm 34, we read a scripture in the beginning of the service before I stood up. You say that the angel of the Lord encampeth around they that fear him. And he delivereth them from all their troubles. But many times we cry, many times we whimper, many times we worry, many times we have sleepless nights. Not understanding the provision, not seeing what the Lord has provided for us. We need God to open our eyes, I say. We need God to open our eyes to see and to understand what is available for us. Praise the name of the Lord our God. Spiritual eyes. As natural eyes see natural realities, spiritual eyes will see spiritual realities. The angels that God has made available for you. The openings that God has placed before you. The way out that God has made available to you, but you do not see. May God open our eyes. I say, Lord, open thou mine eyes that I may see wonderful things that you accomplish for us and your people. Opportunities. God is able to open your eyes to see and to understand what plans the enemies have hatched for you. What traps they have laid for you to trample on. And you go avoiding them. Hallelujah. Walk through them. Through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever this is the heritage of the saints of god may god open your eyes to see may god open your mind to understand may god open our eyes to behold wonderful things out of god's word shall we pray precious and everlasting father we cannot see sometimes but with you, our eyes can be opened for us to see the plans, the openings, the angels surrounding us. Open doors before us, which otherwise we could not have seen. Help us, Lord. Help us to see spiritual realities. Help us, Lord, to understand who we are in you and how we stand in Christ, who is in God. Help us, Lord. Open our hearts. Open our eyes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.